Hey there CNCers! Are you struggling to fit all of the parts for your project onto your material? Do you find yourself wasting time manually moving and rotating the vectors? Well, those days are over! I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about nesting in Vectric software, so no matter what project you're working on, you can make the best use of your time and your materials. I'm also going to teach you a few simple but powerful tips and tricks about toolpaths that you might not have known about that will make nesting even more powerful than it already is. Let's get flapping! Nesting, birds, wings, flapping... I tried. Let's just start. As we do with every video tutorial that we make, we're giving away the Vectric project files for free. So have a look in the description down below for the link to those. It just so happens that Christmas is right around the corner and we wanted to make a whole bunch of these countdown to Christmas ornaments. Countdown to Christmas ornaments. The problem is that there are four components to each ornament and I really don't want to waste my time manually moving and rotating my vectors to fit as many as I could on my material. Vectric. To the rescue! I'm going to let VCarve do the heavy thinking for me by using the nesting option. The great part about nesting is that it can be used for any type of project. Let me repeat, nesting can be used for any type of project. From cabinetry to complex, crazy shaped multi-piece projects, nesting's job is to fit the pieces on your material as efficiently as possible. Even if you're not making these ornaments, I know you can apply nesting to a future project that you're going to make. I've already created the vectors for this ornament. There's going to be a front component with a hole cut out and a Christmassy design on it. A middle component that has the number of days on it that will spin around. And a back component that will have a spacer sandwiched to the front, allowing the middle component to spin freely. You could grab these vectors and start nesting right away. If you happen to be working on a project that only needed one toolpath, it wouldn't be too bad to nest them, select all the vectors, and assign a single toolpath. But I don't have just one toolpath to create this festively fun ornament. I have six. Imagine nesting all of these dainty little vectors over your file and then having to go in and manually select each vector for each different type of toolpath that you need. No, that's not gonna happen. That is just a total waste of time. This is where the real prep for nesting, and to be honest, toolpaths in general starts. And while it might throw you for a little bit of a loop, nesting is pretty well the last thing we're going to do to actually set this file up. And there's a very good reason for this. You'll understand soon, so keep watching. Speaking of keeping watching, we hope that, you know, you're enjoying this video so far. I know we haven't shared a ton of information, but we'd like it if you'd give it a like and a subscribe to our channel. We have amazing content, amazing projects, and amazing resources to help you get the most out of your time CNCing. The first thing I'm going to do is create the layers for each toolpath that I will need to carve for the project. This is a really important part of setting the file up so we can take advantage of some of the toolpath options within vCarve later on. And you can absolutely add more layers after, so don't worry if you find you need to add more. For this particular project, I will need a couple of vCarve toolpaths to carve out the pockets, a profile toolpath to carve out some of the tiny details, another profile to cut a guide for the center finder, that's the spacer in the middle, and two profile toolpaths, one for the inside and one for the outside of the ornament. I'll select the vectors I want for each layer, then right click and select move to new layer and create a new layer. I'll rename that layer to the type of toolpath that I'm going to use to cut those vectors out. In my case, the first one I'm going to make is a pocket for the 30 degree V bits, so I'll call it V bit pocket. 30 degree. Now you'll just repeat the process for as many layers as you need to complete your project. Now it's time to create the toolpaths themselves. It doesn't matter which type of toolpath you're using, so create what you need to make your cuts happen. For my little ornament here, I'm using two bits to get the project done. A 30 degree V bit, and a 1 16th inch down cut bit. 
You can find these bits and all of the other parts for your CNC needs on our web store, cnc.com. Make sure you check it out. Grouping before you nest definitely makes it easier to select and move things about after nesting because the groups are copied to each new duplicate. But it is not necessary in order to have multiple vectors selected to have them stay in place where they're supposed to while you're nesting. Select the vectors for the layer that you want to work on and go over to the alphabet scramble as I call it to bring up the nesting options. The first three options are fairly self-explanatory. Your tool diameter is just your bit diameter. Easy peasy. Clearance is the amount of space that you'd like to leave between each part. This value is made up of the bit diameter plus the spacing that you enter in. Keep your clearance value in mind if you're using tabs to hold your parts in place to make sure you leave enough material for the tabs to actually hold on to. And the border gap is just the gap you want to leave untouched around the border of your material. Keep this setting in mind if you're using work holding such as screws or clamps and you want to avoid them. Part nesting options. Rotate to find the best fit. I checked that guy on. This allows the parts to be rotated on the angle you set in order to fit them on your material. I'm using one degree so they can rotate basically any way they need to in order to fit. For this project however though, rotation isn't going to play much of a role because everything is pretty well circular, but depending on the shapes you're nesting, this can make a huge difference in fitting more parts onto your material. Mirror. I can't use it because it would flip my text and my numbers, but it can be very useful for fitting shapes that their orientation doesn't matter on your material. Allow parts to fit inside other parts. I think this one's pretty self-explanatory too, but it won't work for me because of the size of my objects. However, you can feel free to check it on if you've got bits and bobs that you think might fit inside one another. Nest two-sided parts. It's grayed out because I'm only working on a one-sided job, but you are able to select and nest parts on both sides of a two-sided job if you were working on such a project. Remove original parts. This is personal preference in my opinion. I tend to manually copy the original parts to their own layer, so I have them for, you know, safekeeping, so you can keep it checked on. Sheet options. Both the nest from and nest direction can net some very different results, so I suggest you always play with them to make sure the vector placements are as optimized as possible. Nest boundary. This is a handy feature if you have oddly shaped pieces of material for your project. You can create a vector on a separate layer and then tell nesting to respect that vector as a boundary to fit the pieces in. I'm not using it today, but go and experiment with it to see how useful it can be. Individual part properties. Number of copies. I personally would like to see this menu right at the top of the list because the number of copies is the first thing I'm thinking of when I'm nesting, but that's just my personal flow. Set the number of copies you want to nest, click apply, and you'll see a number showing inside the vectors you have selected. This number indicates the number of copies it will make once you hit preview. Keep in mind that if you enter a number of parts here and it can't fit them on one sheet, VCarve will automatically create as many sheets as it needs to fit all the parts you've requested. Keeping the extra parts in mind, these next few options are all about how extra sheets can be utilized. Filler is a super cool option that allows you to pick a main part to nest and a secondary part to fill in the remaining space on the material. I'm not using it today, but it is very cool, so make sure you play with it. Active sheet and nesting sheets. These are also really functional options that allow you to select which sheet you'd like copies to be made on and control how the copies are distributed. In the interest of time, I'm not deep diving these options like I have the rest, but if you'd like us to make a more in-depth video to show you how useful they can be, drop a comment down below and we'll pop out a video on just how to use them. All right, hit preview and see what VCarve comes up with. If you don't like the way it's placed the vectors, you can always experiment with the settings Hit preview again until you get the results you're after. Once you are done experimenting and you're pleased with the results, hit OK. Now that we've got all these vectors laid out, I'm going to show you the real power behind nesting. Double click on any of the toolpaths you've created. It does not matter which one, the same method will apply to all. You've got your settings as you usually would up at the top, but let's look way down to the bottom at the vector selection portion. Right now it says manual. I want you to click on the selector button. 
it brings up a menu that allows you to filter which vectors you want to select for that specific toolpath. This is why we spent all that time creating the layers that correspond with the toolpaths that we need. This is also why I said earlier that this tip in this tutorial isn't just for nesting, but can be used for any toolpaths you create for your projects moving forward. I want to select all the closed vectors on the VBit pocket layer. So I'll check on all closed vectors and I'll check on VBit pocket layer and you'll see instantly it selects just those vectors. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty super easy and super powerful way to select things when there's tons of vectors within a file. In the past, you've seen me use layers to select vectors, which is what we just kind of did. However, using the vector selection method allows more control over which vectors from certain layers, but it also allows me to associate those vectors with the toolpath that I've got activated, which means any vectors that are added to that specific layer afterwards will automatically get included with that toolpath moving forwards. So I'm gonna check that on as well. Recalculate. And just to show you how nicely the selector works, I'll double click on my second toolpath. Go down to the vector selection, but this time I'll select open vectors because that's what my vectors are on this particular layer. Check the layer I want to select from. Check on associate with toolpath so new vectors will automatically get added to it. Recalculate and presto! You can see how simple but crazy powerful this setup is. Now I'll just repeat these steps for each of my other toolpaths. It's an easy way to populate a lot of toolpaths very quickly. Once I've got all my toolpaths set, I'll check my preview over to make sure I'm happy with it. Save toolpaths that can be grouped together. Fire up G-Sender and let the alt mill take over to carve out all of these ornaments. So there you have it folks, nesting and some toolpath selection wisdom in a nutshell. I feel like these nesting and toolpath selection options don't get nearly enough credit for how easy and powerful they really are. I know there's at least one little tidbit in this video that will help you with your next project. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with me and for watching the video, we appreciate it. Make sure you hashtag and post your failures and your successes to the socials for all of us to see. We all make mistakes, so why not help others learn from the ones that we make? I do this regularly, you guys know this by now. And one last thing, did anyone notice that I was trying really hard to speak a little bit slower in this video? I was trying. It's hard to contain my passion for this stuff. I really genuinely enjoy inspiring, teaching, and most of all, learning about this stuff. So sometimes my mouth runs a little faster than it should. With that being said, be sure to spread the good word about CNC Labs. The more people that know about us, the better. All that love will help us continue making kick-ass products and super helpful videos so we can see around the CNC. These are the ones that we're gonna super glue. We're gonna super glue them here. We're gonna get them as kind of perfectly as we can. Throw one of these on and we wanna line up this with this and then we'll just let it dry overnight. It doesn't look like much, but when you get this stuff stuck to your fingers, guess what happens? Let me see, let me see, let me see before you squish it, bro. It's not centered. I just keep it up and down so it drips down towards what you're trying to do. So that's the hard part. This is the easy part. And you line up this to this. You've got time, so it will slide around, it'll move. So as long as you get it on there, it's fine. I'll give you a hug and your bed back. <laughs> Anything you want to say before I shut it down? Hello!